Hello there, my movie peeps. Finally, we got enough news going on this week. We can make a side flick, so let's get discussing. Some of the things we're gonna be discussing here today is we have an update on Shrek 5 from Universal, a possible casting update for the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, us continuing to ask James Gunn, where the heck is this DC slate? We're like four days away from January ending. Really, that along with so much more. So many of you guys give me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today. But first, I wanna go ahead and thank the sponsor of today's video, and that's Best Spoke Post. Best Spoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering awesome boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and every month they introduce their members to cool new products from outdoor gear, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more. Each box of awesome has around $70 in value, but you only pay a fraction of the price. Also, you only pay for what you want. You'll get a box of awesome assigned to you each month based on a quiz you take when signing up. And before it's shipped, you get a preview of what comes inside to decide if you'd one, keep it, two, swap it for a different box on offer or three skip the month entirely for absolutely no charge you only pay for what you want plus the box lineup changes every month some of the cool packages i've received from best spoke is box number one cask i got a barrel that allows me to fill it up with some of my favorite liquids and once i'm done drinking those liquids i get sleepy so box number two hibernation i got some extremely comfortable slippers along with a room spray to leave my room smelling nice but my latest box i'm really excited to use is this s'mores kit where it gives me everything I need for a perfect night to make some s'mores. To get 20% off your first box, click the link in the description and enter 3C Films 20 or go to bestspokepost.com slash 3C Films. Even if you just browse around the website for a while, you're bound to fall into something you feel like you absolutely need. So to be subscribed to a club that is going to be able to provide you with that stuff every month, I think is just a sweet treat for yourself. I want to thank Best Spoke again for sponsoring today's video and giving me these lovely s'mores. But with that out of the way, Let's dive into our first movie news story here because we got the director of Violent Night letting us know we's getting a sequel. Exclusively reported here on The Wrap, they have it that Violent Night 2 in the works from Tommy Wercola. And here in the article, they basically have it down that yes, they're currently working on a sequel for Violent Night 2. They're getting all the deals sorted out so that we can get this movie. Some of the details they provided for us on what we can expect to see in this second film, they say there's stuff we left on the floor like the North Pole, Mrs. Claus, the elves. But story-wise, I think we have a really really cool idea that expands on the world and scope, but still keeping the tone that we love from that first one. Violent Night was one of my guilty pleasures of last year, just a raunchy rated R violent movie with Santa Claus. David Harbour made that role so much fun and just the sequences that went on in that film had me laughing. If you've seen the movie when they do the whole rated R Home Alone stuff, I was eating that up. And it proved to be a success at the box office where enough people were going back to see it throughout the holiday season, checking it out, and now they're thinking, it's sequel time, baby. The obvious choice to me is to bring in a Mrs. Claus, someone that'll be just as badass as Santa Claus himself, probably fighting alongside with him. But with them also mentioning the North Pole and some elves, it looks like the next movie could be starting off there before we go off to another house. I know other things people have been wanting to see in this sequel is him maybe fight like a Krampus type monster, or maybe his universe's version of like a great character that is obviously copyright safe because that's still owned by Dr. Seuss but there's so many interesting angles you could take with this and just knowing that it's still going to remain a violent rated R movie bring it to me I can't wait how are you guys feeling about Violent Night 2 and what would be your wish list for what you'd want to see in the sequel something that got revealed today that I thought was really awesome but then once you settle in with the news you're like oh this could actually be a little frightening we got the confirmation that The Last of Us has now been renewed for a season 2 on HBO now if you're someone who hasn't been checking out The Last of Us on HBO, I highly recommend it. Even if you're someone who hasn't played the video games, the story and the show is done so well that I think you could really enjoy it and it's kind of different than your most typical zombie apocalyptic type movie shows. But let's be honest here, if you're someone who has played both the games, we were kind of waiting to see if they would make a season two. Now, I'm not going to spoil what happens in season two, but let's just say controversies ahoy. <laughs> They make some bold story decisions in that second game that obviously season two is going to adapt and it was so strong that I remember when I first played The Last of Us Part Two. when those strong moments happened, I had to put the game down for like a month before I went back to it to finish out to see how the rest of the story goes. And by the time I finished the game, I wasn't someone that hated The Last of Us Part Two. I, of course, was devastated and heartbroken with some of the things that happened in there, but the story of the game handles it in such a way that it challenges the viewer to make you rethink Who's the villain of this story? Who's the hero? Whose side do I fall on? And I think that's going to be one of the beautiful parts of 
season two, but it could also be one of the things that could make season two so insufferable because sometimes points like that just fly over the heads of people. You guys know with like the boys, there's still people that see Homelander as like the misunderstood hero that I really relate to Homelander and I'm like, do you? Something wrong with you, homie. But so far with season one, the showrunners and the writers have proven that they can make slight changes, that they can alter things from the games and make it work. Season two, I think, is definitely going to need the most altering. Not in who ends up living, dying, or the way things go down, but just in the way they present the story. Because I think that's one of the reasons so many people didn't even finish The Last of Us Part Two. because after a certain thing happens, they're too mad and they don't even want to finish the game. Either way, really excited for The Last of Us Season 2, and I can't wait to see the reactions of people online. For my casual fans of The Last of Us, have you already been spoiled to what's coming and for my people who have played the games uh, how do you think they should handle that storyline moving on here deadline came out with an article where they were talking to the chief of nbc where they gave us a minor update on shrek 5 we are always looking for a bolt-on acquisition that bolsters our business two examples we bought dreamworks animation and it has been paying off steadily since our acquisition just now puss in boots the last witch which is a big hit at the box office and really our entrance back into the shrek universe continues to make that acquisition look really favorable. I think with a quote like this, it's finally time we talk about that tease at the end of Puss in Boots The Last Witch, which, spoilers, if you have not seen that amazing movie, you really need to go check it out. You'll be just as shocked as me walking out of that theater going, this is the best Shrek movie since Shrek 2. But by the end of Puss in Boots The Last Wish, we have Puss and his friends sailing off to far, far away with a classic little Shrek theme in the background letting you know that's where we're going next. And it's like, no freaking duh, we have gotten the announcement that Shrek 5 has been coming since 2018 and we have seen little to no development other than that little tease in Puss in Boots. Now with the chief at Universal saying Puss in Boots was a success and it's our re-entry in the Shrek universe, that's all the confirmation we need. Shrek 5 is gonna be happening. There's also some doubt amongst fans about how Shrek 5 would work. You know, is it gonna be a continuation of the story from the past four Shrek movies? Would it be a soft reboot where they don't really address the past movies and the animation style is gonna be different? I think Puss in Boots The Last Wish did a really good job of continuing some lore from previous movies, but then becoming its own thing in terms of animation, in terms of where the story goes. And I think Shrek 5 really needs to have that same sort of attitude. They can kind of address a little bit of the previous movies, but they're no doubt going to change the animation style. They might make it a little bit more fast, a little bit more edgy. It might throw some people off like the animation of Puss in Boots The Last Wish, but if you lean into it, it could be really fun. My biggest wish list right now with Shrek 5 is to kind of make the kids that Shrek and Fiona had by the end of 4, making them a bit older and giving them a substantial role in this next movie. I'm thinking something kind of like Avatar 2. The way the kids were handled in that movie, were introduced, given their own personalities, Maybe Shrek 5 can kind of do that. Of course, we're there to see Shrek, Fiona, Donkey, and all those classic characters, but I think you gotta keep things fresh. You gotta do something new. I mean, look at Perrito. He was a new addition in Puss in Boots The Last Wish, and now he's one of my favorite characters in the Shrek universe. So yeah, really great to know that they see Puss in Boots as a success, that they want to jump back into the Shrek universe. We're gonna be getting that movie. Who knows when, but it's coming. What is your wish list and things you want to see out of Shrek 5? From there, we got a small casting update with the Five Nights of Freddy's movie. Now, do take this with a grain of salt since it's only coming coming from one source, Daniel Richman, which I've said before in the past, when it comes to release dates of trailers, they are like 100% on the money. When it comes to movie news, they can be hit and miss. Still, they haven't here reported that actress Elizabeth Leo has been cast as Vanessa in Blumhouse's Five Nights of Freddy's movie. That same source also is saying that Connor Sterling has been cast as Max in the upcoming movie and filming is set to begin February 1st to April 6th. Now this actually does match up with some character descriptions that we've gotten about the Five Nights of Freddy's movie even before all these castings, because as you know, we got Matthew Lillard as William Afton in there, purple guy, Josh Hutcherson as Mike Schmidt, aka Michael Afton. But one of the things FNAF fans were kind of hesitant on is Vanessa's involvement in this first Five Nights of Freddy's movie, because she's a character that wasn't even introduced until Security Breach several games later. The character description we have for her here in this movie is Vanessa's a police officer who shows up during one of Mike's work shifts. While leading with a bright and sunny disposition, Vanessa has a keen understanding of the dark history history and inner workings of the restaurant. Not wanting to reveal too much of what she may know, she works to help Mike survive the night. I don't think it's that big of a deal that they pulled a later character from one of the far off games into the first games. That's kind of the one thing that makes this exciting for me is they're changing up the lore a little bit. They're going to make it a bit accessible to general audiences that might still be pleasing to some of the diehard fans. Because I'll say one of the things that intrigues me most about the Five Nights at Freddy's world is its lore, is how complicated, messed up, and weird twists and turns it takes, but you gotta admit, it also gets very 
confusing. I think this actress, if she actually is going to be playing Vanessa in the movie, works perfect for me. As far as who this Max character could be, this feels like someone brand new into the world. I've seen some people say that she could be another employee at the Five Nights at Freddy's restaurant that works with Josh Hutcherson's character, maybe a possible love interest. Because that's one thing I'm also wondering with the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. We know these animatronics and Willie Mafton loves to kill kids. How many kids are you realistically going to be killing in this movie and how many are going to be adults? A lot of interesting stuff happening for sure. I just can't wait till they actually start filming and then we get some set photos and more details start leaking out. Let me know what you think of these casting choices and how they play into the story of the first movie. This brings me now to just kind of a minor update involving the DC universe. I am still here waiting for this DC slate and I'm starting to worry it might underwhelm us. James Gunn has let us know and teased us almost every day of January that something is coming. He's going to reveal a fraction of his chapter one plan that is a total of eight to 10 years long. And I think this man is really going to wait till the very last day of January to reveal it to us. I thought Friday was gonna be the day that he was gonna let us know, okay, Superman movie's coming, we're gonna title it this, we're gonna have this movie and this movie. But no, he's still keeping it very close to the vest. And I don't even know how they're gonna do this announcement. Is he just literally gonna tweet it out? That feels a little underwhelming, you know, when Marvel's used to not giving us a presentation or at least a little video. Also, even pairing that up with us recently getting a new trailer for Shazam Two, a movie I am excited for. I love that first Shazam movie. I was so happy to see it was getting a sequel, but there was something about this trailer that like did nothing for me. I was watching it with a blank face the entire time. There are some sequences in there that look visually awesome, some cool fights going down, but I was also just thinking in the back of my mind, Am I still going to see this character in James Gunn's future? I mean, I'm already kind of bummed to know that he's not going to fight a Black Adam like his main villain out there. It's never going to meet him, never going to fight him. Or at least it just won't be Dwayne Johnson since he said he's already left the role. So part of me wonders if this announcement of these few movies are going to be interconnected to these upcoming films we have for 2023, or if they'll feel kind of separated from them. Now, don't get me wrong. I do hate that mindset that it's like, well, what happened to the days where we could just watch a one-off movie, enjoy it for what it is. It doesn't have to be connected to everything like the MCU. I can 100% agree with you on that. And that's why I'm excited to sit down and see this movie. But I think there is something diminishing about you telling me also you're not going to see this guy afterwards heck i bet there's some of you out there that have heard that dwayne johnson got fired never checked out black adam and now knowing that information you don't even care to go see it now. I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm still going to see all these DC movies, even if this wasn't my job, because I did like the first Shazam, and I want Shazam 2 to be good. But all I can think about with DC right now is, what is that future plan? What is that slate? And when is you going to reveal it to us, James Gunn? Let me know how you guys feel about the current status of DC. James Gunn waiting until the last minute to reveal his slate. How that slate will impact your viewing of Shazam 2, Blue Beetle, Aquaman 2. Would love to hear it down below. But that is all the news we currently have going on right now, guys. I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movies news don't be forgetting to hit that like button subscribe if you haven't already follow me on twitter at 3c films or on tiktok at 3c films but as always i'm chris take care